All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Rocking with you here on a Wednesday. Yeah. Um, not too much stuff going on. You know, yesterday was a big day, cut down day. Players getting signed from the cut downs. Uh, Bears picked up Alex Leatherwood. That's a team that's really bereft of talent. So uh, it makes sense that they would take a flyer on uh, someone. Um, a lot of people were saying that Aaron Donald should be suspended for waving a, a helmet and hitting, trying to attempt to hit somebody at a Bengals practice. I didn't see it. It's not as big of a deal. It's football practice. That's what happens. Um, you know, Adam Schefter was always, it was, he's always talking about assault. Like Adam Schefter is the same guy that posted, uh, JPP's hospital report. You know, that's a violation, privacy violation. You could have got sued personally for that. I think he did get sued personally for that. Like, I I don't know. It, it just, it just, you know, football's a, a, a crazy game. Yeah, you shouldn't be hitting people in the head with helmets, but generally everyone has their helmets on and I don't know. Um, let's see here. 49ers wave Trey Sermon. I don't know. It's just, it's the Shanahan shenanigans. You know, his dad used to do this. They would get a back, a highly rated back, and then they would let the back that wasn't even drafted play. Um, this is how Alfred Morris became a thing. I forget who he was competing with at the time, but I remember Alfred Morris, they brought in, I forget, I think it was Tim Hightower, and they had paid him big money. And they drafted another running back. And everyone thought it was between them two. And next thing you know, Alfred Morris, the starter, they cut those other two guys. That's what his dad used to do. And it looks like he's doing it. And I, I mean, I don't think he's doing it on purpose. It's just with their style of running, you know, Elijah Mitchell's their guy. And that's what they're going with. Um, Baker Mayfield got into some situation because he said he'll fuck the Browns up. Like, um, and I guess... Uh, I need to stop cursing on this. YouTube sent me a notification that, you know, they tamp down broadcasting your views when you're cussing. So um, I got to slow down with the curse words a little bit. They said you will F them up. Um, supposedly some reporter, uh, Cynthia Freeland, who does stuff for NFL Network. I forget how exactly how it came about. Cynthia Freeland said that he's going to F them up in the regular season opener. I don't know. It seems like you just, you know, a banter between a quarterback and a reporter. Not everything you say, the reporter is going to run with. And, you know, before you have to do all on the record, off the record. But I think like reporters kind of know like, hey, let me say this. Let's not say that. And uh, maybe she doesn't know the game. So he said he didn't say it, non-story. I mean, I think everybody, if you've been paying attention to the type of person Baker Mayfield is, you know that he's fired up and he's ready to play this game. And though I don't think that's like a surprise to anybody, right? Um, nothing going on in the NBA. Yeah, nothing really going on anywhere. So let's go ahead and get to the NFC North. North Arts. All right, so the Green Bay Packers are the favorite, not a heavy favorite, only minus 155. With them, the number one question is the receiving core. You know, you lose arguably the best receiver in football, Devontae Adams. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers is notoriously wary of trusting receivers. You have rookie receivers. You have Sammy Watkins. He said Alan Lazard is the number one receiver. I didn't see that in his profile. I think he ran like a 4-7. And what you run doesn't matter, but he doesn't seem like an explosive enough player to be a number one. Um, it, it really shocked me that they didn't get a receiver um, in free agency, not even the draft because of Aaron's age to get a young receiver. I mean, if you're going to get a stud like Jamar Chase, then yeah. But So that, that was, it was shocking. Um that they didn't do that, but uh, besides that gap, they're the, one of the more complete teams in football. So, 
It'd be interesting to see that. And they did this all last year without Bakhtiero, one of the best left tackles in the league playing, uh, with Jair Alexander being hurt most of the year. So uh, the Vikings. The Vikings are a really trendy pick. Um, Really trendy pick. And I don't see it. I mean, not with Kirk Cousins. No. Not with Kirk Cousins. They traded for Jalen Rager today. Uh, I think that's a good pick, especially with Thielen getting older. Rager was a guy that was rated very high on a lot of draft boards. Um, it didn't work out in uh, Philadelphia. And I think that uh, he needed a fresh start. So maybe it works out here. Um, and because Kevin O'Connell comes from the Sean McVay system where they usually run three by one sets with three wide receivers and one tight end, um, you know, um, he's going to play a big role and he's going to get, you know, targets. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Uh, the Lions, like I said in the breakdown that I did of them, uh, I think this season is just to play for the QB of the future. Um, you know, maybe the coach is not with that, Dan Campbell, but this is a team that definitely next year is a QB away from being, um, you know, a really deadly team. And I don't think you you risk that to, quote unquote, set up a men winning mentality, but I don't know. I'm, I was surprised that he got the coaching position. As he, and not that he's a bad coach, but his previous stint in Miami wasn't the greatest, most, you know, couldn't, you know, poorly, I wouldn't say it was poorly run, but it wasn't, you know, it didn't look like they had, you know, Apple's management running the football team. Um, and then finally, the Bears. I think this is a candidate for the worst team in football. Uh, so I don't know what the odds are on that are, but, you know, they have really done Jalen, um, uh, they've really done Justin Fields a disservice. Uh, no number one receiver to really speak of. You just have Mooney. Bad offensive line, bad defense. And, hey, it's a turnaround job. I get that. Then you hire a defensive head coach, which means if the offense is good, the offensive coordinator is going to be poached immediately. All right? So I, I just – I really don't understand what this team is doing, the construction of the team. Uh, yeah, I think that they're going to be definitely in line for the number one pick. But this draft is so stocked with quarterbacks that maybe you could turn that number one pick into three first rounders and really build your team that way. So it might be a blessing in disguise. So um, this division is kind of straightforward to me. I mean, everybody's high on the Vikings. I just don't see it with Kirk Cousins. His record versus winning teams, the way that he plays in these games – not that he doesn't have the talent. He doesn't have the spirit, you know? Does he have the spirit to go in and say, I can compete with these guys and play with these guys? I don't think anyone ever questioned Matt Stafford's spirit. You And, you know, he obviously turned around with the Rams, but his spirit, does he have the – does it feel like when you go into these games with him that he's fired up and he's ready to go? I just – I don't see it. You know, they, they had that one – win versus the Saints the next week they get fucking embarrassed the large of the, the question again the best player from the Vikings have had in this modern history has been with the backup quarterback he wasn't even he wasn't even uh the quarterback at the time right so it's just like I, I'm, I'm not trying to be negative I'm not trying to be a hater but just look at his record this is Kirk Cousin that knelt took a knee when he was supposed to spike it, remember that he did that with the the the, the racial slurs, uh, who multiple teammates have screamed at him on the sidelines. Adam Thielen, Diggs, Justin Jefferson. He's a frustrating guy. He just does. He moves to a different beat. So I just don't see how all of a sudden he's going to be a Super Bowl champion and and you know overnight. I don't care how well schemed the offense is. I think it's just a limitation to him. So I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks for rocking with me. Uh, give some more content out this week. The game is the game.